Hey up guys, it's Cly here and welcome to Let's Play Jack and Daxter The Precursor's Legacy. Of course, this is going to be a 100% playthrough. I've only ever done this once before, so if I do fuck up, actually no, when I fuck up, which will be probably within the first uh, three minutes of the game, most likely. Alright, let's create our new save data. Of course, this is on a new account, just so I can show you all the trophies. I have spent my life searching for the answers that my father and my father's fathers failed to find. Who were the precursors? Why did they create the vast monoliths that litter our planet? How did they harness Eco, the life energy of the world? What was their purpose? And why did they vanish? I have asked the plants, but they do not remember. The plants have asked the rocks, but the rocks do not recall. Even the rocks do not recall. Every bone in my body tells me that the answers rest on the shoulders of a young boy. Oblivious to his destiny, uninterested in the search for truth, and rejecting of my guidance. And why would he want to listen to old Samus the Sage anyway? I'm only the master of Green Ego, one of the wisest men on the planet. <sighs> So it seems the answer begins not with careful research or sensible thinking. Nay, as with many of fate's mysteries, it begins with but a small act of disobedience. Hey, uh, Jack, old green stuff told us not to come here. Search for artifacts and eco. If the locals possess precursor items, you know what to do. Deal harshly with anybody who strays from the village. We will attack it in due time. What are we doing here anyway, Jack? This place gives me the creeps. Stupid precursor junk! Eek! What is that dark ooze? It sure don't look friendly! <gasps> the sage yaps on about the precursors that built this place all the time! Where did they go? Why did they build this crud? Now I like precursor orbs and power cells as much as the next guy. But if you ask me, they must have been real losers. Wow! How did you do that? I think we're in trouble! Help! Man, that stung! I told you we shouldn't have come here, and you listened! What? I'm fine. I'm fine. What in green tarnation do you two want? We, we, we was, they was, I, I was... Don't tell me. Instead of heeding my wisdom, the two of you went mucking around in the only place that I told you not to go. Misty Island. That's right. And then... And Daxter. You finally took a much-needed bath, but in a bathtub filled with dark eco. Look, old man! Are you gonna keep yapping, or are you gonna help me out of this mess? I'm gonna keep yapping, because in my professional opinion, the change is an improvement. And besides, I couldn't help you if I wanted to. What?! There's only one person who has studied dark eco long enough to have a chance at returning you to your previous form. Carl Acheron, the Sage. But he lives far to the north. Far, far to the north. 
Nobody has spoken to him in ages. I would teleport you there, but I can't do that either. None of the three sages that maintain the other teleporter gates have seen fit to turn their ends on for quite a while. The only other way north is by foot through the Fire Canyon, but its volcanic soil is hot enough to melt precursor metal. You can't just walk through it. But you could fly over it if you had a zoomer equipped with a heat shield. I just happen to be working on such a thing at this very moment. All I would need is 20 power cells to give it enough energy to withstand the canyon's heat. Isn't that right, Daddy? Yes, Kira, that might work. But where are a boy and a half going to get 20 power cells? From the villagers. Most of them have a power cell or two stashed away somewhere. And even if they aren't willing to just give them away, greasing their palms with a few precursor orbs should do the trick. And I bet there are even more of them out in the wilds just waiting for some brave adventurer to find. Well, we've got the brave adventurer at least. Brave adventurer? You two couldn't find your way out of the village without training. Before you do anything else, you better go through the warp gate and get some practice on Geyser Rock. Eh, uh, we won't find any more of that dark gooey eco stuff, will we? Cause I'd hate to fall in again and turn into you! Get in there! Before I turn you both into ferns! Okay, so this is Giza Rock. Unfortunately, I'm not going to get to talk too much in this because the Sage, Samos, and Kira are going to be chatting my balls off. So let's just let them talk, shall we? You can't come back to the warp gate until you find all four power cells on this island. Alright, so there are four power cells on the island, very easy to get, and there actually are 50 precursor orbs on the island as well. However, if you do go out into the ocean, something's going to try and get you. Now, as a kid, that scared the absolute shit out of me. If you don't already know, I have a great fear of looking out into the ocean like this and just seeing absolutely nothing. Even worse, looking down into the ocean and seeing nothing. Because there's always something down there and you know it, there's always something there. Ah, oh, it just creeps me out. By the way, if you press R1, you can do a roll. And uh, if you press R1 and X, you can do a little hop like that. Where? A little roll jump. With it, my father and I can give you advice at any time during your quest. Now these boxes do contain green eco, which will give you extra life, and Sage Samos will actually talk to you about that soon enough. And by the way, these are the Precursor Orbs. These floating egg-shaped things are Precursor Orbs. Collect enough of them, and some of the villagers will give you a power cell in exchange. I was going to mention earlier that I have actually played through this a little bit, just to get used to the controls because I've not played in quite a long time. So I played through, just got used to the controls, and I have to say, I'm fairly adept at them now. I, I say that just I press L2 by accident there. I'm fairly adept, so I should be okay. I shouldn't fail too hard. I'm probably going to fail, but I shouldn't fail too hard. So I did actually accidentally collect a trophy. A little bit unfortunate, but you know what? That shouldn't really matter too much. This is a power cell, the most important precursor artifact you can find. You need to collect 20 of these so I can power the heat shield for your A-Grav Zoomer. Alright, so let's go collect our first power cell. You gotta love the little dances that they do. Oh, yeah, of course I'm gonna save. There we go. Oh, almost fell into the spikes there. You know, I kind of love how this game is a lot like Crash Bandicoot. It's really unfortunate that they decided to change up the style and make it more like gritty and sort of futuristic with guns and stuff. That wasn't really my style. Here we're gonna find some scout flies, but Kira's gonna talk to you about that. Hey, you found one of my scout flies. I sent seven of them to each area to look for power cells, but the lurkers must have captured them all. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm jumping up and pressing square. This will do a ground slam like that. You just use your hands. Kind of looks like using your face, but you actually are using your hands if you look closely enough. You can kind of tell he's using his hands to like sort of palm the ground. You can also jump and spin. This will actually get you just a little bit extra height. So if you press R1, press X like that, you can do a super jump. Press super jump and do a little spin. You can see I gain just a little bit extra height, and that is also very useful for getting around places. This is the last scout fly down here, and there you go. Once you collect it, the power cell does come out. However, if you 
you just walk away, you don't get it. You don't get it just by getting the last fly. You have to physically pick the thing up. Wow! That last scout fly had a power cell. I'll bet if you collect all seven in each area, you can find even more power cells. See, the only reason I mentioned that is because I've actually played through this before, got all the scout flies, and I was like, where's my last power cell? What's going off? And then I realized I didn't actually pick it up. I'm such a dunce. That's Blue Eco, which contains the energy of motion. Blue Eco allows you to run fast, break boxes, and even activate some precursor artifacts when you get near them. Okay, so this is Blue Eco, which basically turns you into Supersonic with the magnetic power-up. Notice how each Blue Eco cluster you pick up increases the time you can use its power. Now, if you didn't already know, of course, there are precursor orbs down here. And these are the ones I got stuck on for quite a while. I didn't actually think there's anything down here, but guess what? There is. Now, actually, behind this area is a Blue Eco Fountain. Or a blue eco vent, actually. I should correct myself there. A blue eco vent. And you were gonna need this to actually power up one of the doors. This is a precursor door. It can only be opened by approaching the door while channeling blue eco through your body. So we're going to use this blue eco vent over here. That's a blue eco vent. More concentrated than the floating clusters, this vent will give you a full charge of blue eco, letting you use it for the maximum time. All right, let's go do it, then let's go open the door. And of course, I just fall straight into the water because I am an absolute goon. All right, I'm going to swim around and get to the thing again. Wow. Wow. Alright, let's try again, shall we? My god. I am so good at this game, by the way. Did I forget to mention that? Good work! The Blue Eco caused the door to open. With Blue Eco, you can breathe energy into all kinds of precursor artifacts that have laid dormant for years. Right, if you press start, you can actually see the percentage you're on, and you can actually see how many things you've got left. Of course, in the top right, you can see how many precursor orbs you've got, how many power cells you've got, and how many scout flies you've got in this area. Well, in total, of course, but in this area, this is how many I've got. And of course, we only have one more power cell to go, and these are the objectives. The ones that are like sort of greyed out a bit, you know, they're sort of faded, a bit transparent, or translucent, I should say. They're a bit translucent, uh, those are the ones you haven't actually found yet. You don't know what mission they are, so you can't actually tell what they are. If you find the mission, you'll be able to tell what power cell you need. So there you go. Those little green balls of energy on the ground are a type of eco. Pick up 50 small green ecos or one big green one to increase your health. Now, I just say to increase your health, but that really means to restore your health. As you can see up there, I have 50 and I'm actually full health. So, really, you don't increase it, you just restore it if you've lost any which right now I haven't lost any at all, which is good, so I won't actually need that. As you can see there, I use my little jump tactic, which I didn't need to do, but you can actually use that to collect things that are a bit higher up. Then jump again in the air to reach even higher ledges. And there we go, all 50 precursor orbs in Giza Rock, and this is the last power cell. Alright, so we're going to pick up this blue eco, activate this little lift type thing, and then head off back to Sage Samos. Good training, boys. But that's nothing compared to the challenges that lie ahead. And uh, no problem. We got the moves, eh, Jack? We'd love to stay in chat, Big Green, but we're uh, itching to get on with our adventures. Fine, fine. Adventure away, then. And while you're out adventuring, 
Why don't you make yourself useful? My darn green eco-collectors are clogged up again. Head out to the far side of the beach and clear them out, why don't you? Follow the lamps. They'll take you right there. Now, all of you, get out of here!